Lady Barbara, thank you for joining us. What's the significance of the Caspian Corridor region for those in Europe and further afield in the Western world uh, from a business perspective? I think the Caspian Corridor region is a, a very important for at least two reasons. First of all, because it's so mineral rich. It has so many natural resources, and they're all so concentrated in one area. Second of all, it's physically in the best place in the world. It's between the West and the East, and indeed corridor is the right word. And it's very important that we keep that corridor open for international trade. I think people are slowly realizing how very important that region is and how it needs to be um, utilized. And that's international investors are now coming in and thinking, this is a place that I want to be. We talked about corridor. To what extent do we need to take into account the interests of the states that adjoin the corridor, so Russia to the north, Iran to the south? And to what extent are those interests aligned when we look at the region as a whole? Well, I think it's very important to understand that we have that they have two big neighbors yeah. who also have a lot of, of a lot of resources, and that there's definitely going to be an interrelationship between mm. the neighbors and the Caspian countries. Mm. The most important thing for all of us is that the Caspian countries have those relationships, but also have the relationships with the West, yeah. so that they can be a bridge, they can be a place of dialogue, mm. they can be a place where actually joint ventures could occur, mm. and things could happen in those regions that might not happen in Russia or Iran, mm. might not happen in England and France, but in those places where people are educated abroad, mm. they're opening their borders, they're looking outside, many good things can happen there. What types of uh, uh, requirements do investors from outside the region have when considering deals, whether the deals or long-term contracts with the, the countries in the region? Well, as we just learned, they need a stable banking system. Mm. They need to believe that when they put their money in the banks, it will be there. Yeah. And they need a rule of law. And I think these countries, which have, are starting to understand that more and more and developing their banking system and developing their system of rule mm. of law, it will take a while. Everything is evolutionary. Mm. But they have the right idea, the right ambition, and the right people in place to do it. How big do you think in the future other sectors of the economy could be in the region given the, you know, the, the large role played by the energy sector? Well, everybody tells me that Baku is absolutely fantastic, mm. that it's a great tourist site. Mm. And I, I myself would love to go there. Mm. There are beautiful lakes, there, are beauti there can be lovely hotels. I think tourism in that area, it's very historical, that area. Mm. People will want to go there. And soon enough, they'll bring manufacturing as well. Because mm. if you have raw materials mm. and if you have energy, manufacturing will follow. Mm. Lady Barbara, thank you very much for your time. Do you have any other comments regarding the region or any particular thoughts on uh, the key takeaways from today's uh, Well, I didn't know a lot about the region until a couple of years ago. Mm. Now I've been to Kazakhstan quite a number of times. I know it has such huge uranium um, natural resources. I'm very excited about mm. Azerbaijan because I've heard it's such a special place. People I've met are charming. I met some woman who was involved in politics in Georgia, so I know a little about it. It's an area that's bubbling up, that all of a sudden the world is waking up to this very interesting place where we haven't been before, and we all want to go.